G'day folks, my name is Nick. This little, little blue boat behind me is my Kareel 18 Second Wind. She's a native of Australia, built right here in Sydney. It's November of 2000 COVID-20. And one of this year's other distinctions, apart from the obvious, is the 50th anniversary that these great little trailer sailors went into production. As a part of that celebration, I'm doing a few videos on my Kareel. And in today's video, it's just a, a general odd jobs day where I need to do a bit of maintenance. Earlier this year in February, uh, we were having our Kareel Nationals and a big meetup, and I was in a dreadful hurry to try and get the boat ready. I had a few um, setbacks. Anyway, I literally got the boat ready with hours to spare. And one of the things that I had to do at the time, I had to put an eye splice in my anchor rope because I didn't have time to get a thimble for it. Uh, and I'd forgotten about that till last week when I pulled the anchor out and it reminded me that, oops, I need to put a thimble in this. So I've cut this off, I've cut it off, and I've got myself a thimble and a shackle, and I'm about to splice up uh, the thimble into the end of the, uh, the anchor rope. So that's the first job today. There we go. Job one done. So I've done my eye splice, I put a bit of heat shrink on it. That hides my bad splicing, so I can't get too criticized for it. And I'm just gonna put this on the shackle. Nice and tight. And I'll just table tie it, tie it to uh, safety clip it. Once I've re-varnished the gunnels, I got some damage here from the anchor chain. It doesn't probably because of the furl, it just doesn't seem to like to come up over the barrel roller. So I've got two of these. I'm going to fit a couple of these up along here to uh, safeguard the gunnel. Job number two, I have this wire, it's a safety wire when I take this pin out. It normally has a padlock on it. It's actually broken. It's spiking my finger a bit. I've got a cable tie and there's a temporary measure. So I've got my swager. I've just swaged up a new M for it. I just got to connect it up here. So that'd be job number two. That's the end of job two. New bit of wire swaged on and the uh, padlock uh, put back on again. <clears throat> so job three is filling up this rail blazer mount for my camera. It's what they call a star mount. So that's like the, the winch handle base. And that's it there. So this is a rail one. I put a couple others on the bow. I've been really happy with these. And I'll show you what it looks like on the on the camera there. And here it is mounted. So I can see it on my phone. I can Wi-Fi to it. And that's what it looks like on the front mount. And I'll take you down and show you some of the back click mount star rail mounts that I've fitted to the boat as well. This is how it Wi-Fi's to your phone. So I can use it remotely. And I replaced the two back cleats on the back with these star mounts. So this and go in there like that. There we go. I've got another one on the other side. Oopsie daisy. So I've got that one there. This is the rail blazer that I originally uh, went to buy which got me interested in the whole system where I could put the cleats on the back and do other things as well and I, what I wanted was I needed something for my uh, my tablet that I could fit in so I think if I can do this one handed whoops it goes in like that this one has a, a USB outlet so there's a wire that runs through the middle of it it goes into the switch panel here under my electronics and that uh, energizes this so I can run uh, power to my tablet or to a phone or any other device for that matter. And that's, so that was the original one that I bought for it. Um, I do have another one, uh, I have an extension where I can mount my phone, but it came with an extra star mount. So I'm gonna probably mount that uh, in here somewhere. If I mount it down here, the draw will get in the way of the drawer. So I'll probably mount it up here. Uh, out there I'd say so that's going to be job number four job number four done I've mounted this in the 
on top of the center case. Uh, this of course still works fine, that's okay. It's screwed into the top. Uh, so that allows me to put my, whoops, mount my, and there we go. There's the camera mounted. Okay, so that's now filming from inside the boat. <coughs> Part of the, the messiness of the boat, I'm doing jobs, so that's why it's a bit messy. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's that's how it mounts, uh, and that's what the, the camera view looks like. I'll turn it around in a moment and see what it looks like. So this is my little cheap, it's sort of like a GoPro-like camera. I think they're an Australian company uh, down in Melbourne, and they're uh, Kaiser Bass. And this camera, which Bluetooth uh, to my phone, you can see it there, uh, it's $59. I didn't want to hang my iPhone out over the side of the boat and have it go plop in the water. I'd be very upset. But at $59, I wouldn't be uh, crying my beer quite so much. So, but I've been really impressed uh, with the camera. It comes with a full waterproof casing like a GoPro camera. Uh, I think the picture quality is, uh, is good, especially for the price. And they have uh, obviously a whole range of cameras up to probably about $500 but this is their baseline 2 X230 and it was $59 from JB Hi-Fi. Alright, I made this little chart up, it's a battery chart that tells me for my number of volts what my battery level percentage is so I don't really want to go under 12.05 volts. I'm currently sitting at 12.89, 12.9 so that means I'm probably somewhere about 95%. Uh, so that's job number five done. That's probably it for the night. Tomorrow I'll get the mast up and sort out those hayers and tie it up the forestay. I like to get the top off the centerboard case. I still got to do some work um, on the up haul on the cable. It's day two uh, of doing some jobs on the boat. Uh, when I sailed the boat last week, the forestay was quite slack and this it must have come undone. Sometimes when you drive along, these tend to rattle a little bit looser. Uh, but uh, I've put the mast up, as we can see, and I've adjusted uh, the turnbuckle so she's now nice and tight and it's on a high fill lever. So job seven, uh, this is my main hay, this is my topping lift. This needs to, you probably won't see it there, this needs to go behind the shrouds. Uh, these two need to go in front uh, because the way it's sort of set up. Anyway, it's always been a problem since I've had the boat that I'm always getting the main halyard and the topping lift tangled either up the top where I can't quite fully pull the main up or it's getting wrapped around uh, the shrouds and sometimes even in the forestay. Anyway, so I've put this pad eye on, I've just ripped it on so what's supposed to be behind the shrouds at the back of the mast is now there. What's supposed to be in front is now there. So I'm hoping that that will solve a lot of my sort of tangling issues. About a month ago, I bought off eBay this little cordless uh, vacuum cleaner. It's just one of those little car ones. Uh, cheapest one I could get uh, that was cordless. It's got a cable that plugs into the panel to recharge it. And whilst it might seem a little bit lame, it actually works really well. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. It's a cheap, crappy little unit. But if I'm doing jobs on the boat, instead of having to go off and get my shop fax or one of the vacuum cleaners from inside, I can come out, uh, this one just stays permanently in the boat, and it's quite good for sucking up uh, tailings of doing some drilling into something or uh, or similar. So, so far, I'm, you know, is cheap and nasty as it is, it's actually worked quite well and come in quite handy. Job number eight today, I need to take the top off the centerboard case. So here's the centerboard case here. Uh, she's a iron plate of about 90 kilos, maybe 100 kilos. Originally it was 65, it's been expanded uh, by welding two laser cut cheeks on each side and then all fared over which I did uh, I refared last summer uh, the 
uphaul for it should be a, a wire and not this rope. I mean, this is quite okay. So it goes from here through a wheel at the top of the centerboard, back back out again, and it goes down to this pulley here. Let's see if I can, and then it goes through a set of block and tackles. I added a winch there last year, which has helped a lot. I replaced the, the um, uh, the cord for it uh, to a smaller gauge which took a lot of the friction out of the system but I've, I still want to replace this with the wire so I've just taken all the screws the mounting screws out of this um, and I'm about to see if I can get pop it off right well that came out nice and easily which is good so there's the top of the case when I finish doing all the jobs I've got a hole here that I made last year to run a cord out for the keel lockdown it didn't work it just spewed water out through it um, so I've routed back out here where it originally went uh, I've got to take this off and um, seal it up properly bog it and fiberglass it but this is a bit of a, a, sil a silicon sort of a gasket now I need to replace that when I uh, finish the job completely it's a new uh, shackle and a new wire and I've uh, run it down here and swaged on the end and that job should now be done for the, the time being So the next job will be to Properly fill this hole that I made uh, Then to put the top back on uh, Which is over there um, and to run a bit of celastic some sort of a seal and some sicker along here I don't want a sticking one if I can get some butyl uh, tape, that'd be good because uh, I want to be able to get it back out without having to cut it, which is what I had to do last time. And that just forms a bit of a gasket. So that's, I think, job about job number nine. Job number whatever now, I think it's about up to about number 10. The, the boom vang was in the wrong spot and too tight an angle. So I've installed this one here for my new boom vang, which would be a more appropriate place. That's where most people tend to have them on the mast step. So that just took a few moments. I just need to tighten it up a little bit more. The last job of the day, the boat's only got a little battery. It's got a 10 ampere hour deep cycle battery. My, I call it my little itty bitty battery. Uh, it's all LED lights on the boat. I've got the mast head burning as well. You may not be able to see it there, but I'm just load testing to see how long my lights will actually last for. I've also got my battery monitor in there now. Anyway, I've been running for an hour. I'm about to turn the nav lights off. Um, and now just run the interior lights and the mast head light. And I'll probably then turn the interior lights off about nine o'clock tonight or something. And then just run the mast head and see what sort of a, a draw I do on the battery. My battery's down to about 12.2 volts. That puts it around the 60, 65% sort of, of uh, capacity uh, left. So that means that the little itty bitty battery has uh, done quite a good job of running all the lights that it would need to run if you're staying out at anchor for the night. I unplugged the solar panel so uh, it wouldn't start charging until I was able to get to the panel this morning so I'll plug that back in and we'll see how long it takes to charge it back up. It is a grey wet rainy day but I think it will clear up a little bit later and we'll come back and see how that goes. Okay solar panels uh, plugged back in again and it's uh, charging uh, a bit a little bit slowly. At seven o'clock this morning, the battery is down to 12.2 volts on my chart. That puts it about 70% capacity. Um, and it's now two o'clock in the afternoon, so that's seven hours later. It's a very overcast day. I'll just turn the masters back on. It's a, it's, it's a very overcast day. It's been raining all day, so it's not a good solar day. But it's back up to 12.7, which is nearly 90%. Um, Another couple of hours will be fully charged and I'm pretty impressed with that after such a lousy sort of a solar day so if it was bright and sunny it would obviously do a lot better. So my last job this morning uh, or this afternoon was putting the mask back down again. I'm about to put the cover on. I filled the hole in the side of the centerboard case 
and I've re uh, refitted the, um, uh, the top of the centerboard case so that's all done. I bought some little snaps. I'm going to, I have a, um, I've got a flywire that goes around this enclosure. I've held it on with Velcro, that's not working that well. The Velcro up the top here is good, but I'm going to put some snaps around the, uh, the perimeter of the uh, companionway hatch. So I'll probably do that sometime during the week. Well, the cover's back on the boat, so that means the jobs are done for the day. Um, typically, it's turned rather pleasant now. It's a nice breeze and it's fairly cool, where it was very hot, humid and raining before. But now that the cover's back on the boat, it's all cleared up. Well, to some extent anyway. Um, but I got most of the jobs done. I still got to do the varnishing, so hopefully I'll get to do that next week or get a start on it. But anyway, that concludes this video. So thanks very much for watching.